According to Ole Anderson, he found out that allegedly Jim Barnett was stealing money from the Georgia Championship Wrestling offices. My question is, if anybody else besides Ole found this out, would there ever have been a Black Saturday? Um. Well, well first of all, and what I had heard um, after the fact from Ronnie West – who was a referee in Georgia for years and worked in the office and checked up at the box office and everything later worked with us in Smoky mountain. But he was, he was assigned to Dundee's crew in the summer of 83, which is right about when all these things were happening and Barnett had gone to Vince, right? It's just a few months that Barnett was pushed out Christmas time, 82. The justification that I got was, that sure, Barnett had dipped in and and taken some money out of the company account, but by the same token, nobody ever said anything when he put it in or or when he had it put in. Because Barnett sometimes, a lot of times, it was not his money; it was people's. He knew's money. Um, but I think I think Barnett had always run it like it was his, and through good and bad, and truthfully, time has borne out that. From 1974 on, nobody really ran a successful territory, even Crockett. Georgia was not booming like it was under Barnett. Barnett was the key to running a, a great territory in Georgia. Um, so, yeah, so he put some in when he wanted. He took some out when he wanted. And I heard also that he had flown to Hong Kong to have a brand new exclusive wardrobe made because that's where he had all his suits made. He did that every year, though. He did that annually. Yeah, Bob yeah. Simmons told me that. Yeah, and while he was gone, Ole strong-armed his way in, I think, through the, maybe there was a bookkeeper involved, but he strong-armed his way in and looked at shit and said, all right, and got everybody mad, and they ousted Jimsy. And when he came back, he had no territory. So that's that was – that basically, that's the reason. That's why that, that Vince McMahon got – Georgia championship wrestling. And that's why it ended up uh, Crockett having it because Jim Barnett always got revenge on people who fucked him around in the wrestling business. And that's what he was trying to do years later when he came back to WCW after uh, he had had the falling out and been, you know, let go by Vince. He was trying to get even that one last time, but he wasn't able to do that one. That was the only time anybody ever got over on him. It's, I think the most impactful moment, believe it or not, of wrestling in the 80s when you really go back and look at it, because Barnett goes to Hong Kong to get his suits made and whatever else he did in Hong Kong. And Ole... Fooey. Fooey. <laughs> <laughs> Ole, you said he got everyone riled up. He really didn't. He got Fred Ward riled up. Well... On side. And, you know, Fred Ward owns Southern Georgia. So now you have Ole and Fred Ward. Barnett comes back and Ole forces him out of the company. And Ole claims that Barnett's been stealing money from the company. Look at 1983 Georgia. You can romanticize it now because the road warriors are there. And, and Oh, business was the shit. It was, it was awful. I mean, he killed and he fired people just, you know, Roddy Piper's in and now Roddy Piper's gone. I mean, just, it was Ole really fucked up a lot of shit. And he also, oh, oh. and well, and also when I did the uh, back to the territories with the mass superstar, I was trying to follow his career in Georgia and he would, he would win a mask match over somebody. Then, then he'd be gone himself and he'd be gone to Japan and he'd come back and Ole'd stick him into something. And it was, the booking was just, it was all over the place. People were winning and losing titles. I think only it, it, it may have at that point, maybe he was burnt out. Because he had been a main event heel in both Georgia and the Carolinas and a booker in Georgia and at one point in the Carolinas for the previous 10 years to 15 years almost. Was he burnt? I don't know, but it just fell apart. You know, the other thing is he alienated his other partners in the Georgia office, specifically the Briscoes. The Briscoes. And, and would, who, which one member of the Welch family had a piece at that point? Was it, was it Lester or was it Buddy? I, well, it definitely wasn't Buddy, I don't think. I just don't know if Lester owned a piece of it in 1982. I actually have to double check and go back to that. Well, I, I mean, we're we're getting down, we're picking nits now. But the point is, is that there was just, there was a couple. One of the, member of the Welch family until at, at recent point had had part of it. But but yeah, everybody else only was kind of, he was the, the uh, grumpy old island done to himself. Yeah, so, I mean, the big moment is Watts sells his 10% of the office to Ole in 82. And again, Watts got that as a gift almost for when he came in there during the war and became the booker. 
So he had yep. that 10%. He sells it to Ole. Ole, what he does is decides to push out Barnett. Barnett, like you said, he was, you know, he's a guy who's going to get revenge. He goes to Vince at the perfect time. Cause all Vince wants to do right now is gobble up television. And who better to have on your side? Yeah. Oh, deal with the television then, then then the guy that invented studio wrestling practically yeah and he had relationships all over the country you know there's that famous moment the 1983 nwa convention which was even though things are already happening that was really the official declaration of war where the mcmahons and jim barnett leave the nwa like publicly after ole anderson goes off in the middle of the meeting they walk out and they resign from the nwa and from that point on Summer of of 84, Georgia Championship Wrestling gets pushed out. Vince buys the the remaining partners, and he gets the television spot. That moment, Bill Watts selling the 10% to Ole and Ole forcing out Jim Barnett changed the shape of the wrestling business more than almost anything else you could think of. I agree. Well, there we go. (laughs) 